Good morning, everybody, here in the North Country. This is Judy Weber, and you're listening to Heaven Bound. I see a city. I see my Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. Once again, on behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins, we are super excited that you are spending yet another half hour with us. And if this is your first time listening to us on the radio, this program is brought to you by the great folks at Calvary Bible Church. We are a small church located in Gregg, New York. And we have the motto, only a stranger once. So if you are currently looking for a good Bible-believing church, we're a friendly congregation, and we do stand firm on the King James Bible, we hope that you will come give us a try today. Our address is 6968 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. If you want to come, you can put that into your GPS, or you can follow these super easy directions If you're coming out of the south, like Boonville or Utica area, head north on Route 12. If you're coming out of the north, like Lowville or Watertown, head south on Route 12. And if you're coming out of the West Leiden or Rome area, head north on Route 26. Keep going straight on to 12D, and then head north on to Route 12. In all those directions, take Route 12 to the Burdick's Crossing Road, and that is right down in a dip right by the Valley Brook Drive-In movie theater. You'll take... Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end. Make a left-hand turn onto Gregg Road, head up the hill, and make your first right-hand turn onto Sweeney Road, and we are up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. Sometimes today, with being the third Sunday of the month, we will begin our day at 9 o'clock for our fellowship breakfast. And everyone is encouraged to attend, everyone is invited to attend, and we hope you will. There is great food, and you don't have to bring anything, just your appetite and a willingness to sit and visit with some people. At 9.30, we'll start Sunday school. That'll run for an hour. Then we will have our morning service at 10.30, and that will run until noon, where we will take a short break and go downstairs for lunch. And Once again, everything is provided for you. You don't have to bring anything. But we do encourage everyone to stay because it's a great time to fellowship. And then at 1 o'clock, we will have our afternoon service once again with Pastor Jim Jenkins. Then we'll break for half a week, and we will be back here again on Wednesday at 7 o'clock for our midweek prayer service. And that seems like a lot of church, but just you cannot get enough. We actually just finished some special meetings with Brother Gerald Fielder, And if you missed out on any of those and would like a DVD, just contact us, and we will send that right out to you. If you need a ride and you would like to come but you can't get here, give us a call. Our phone number is 315-348-6271, or you can send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. And we will try our best to get someone out to pick you up. And if all else fails, that if that still doesn't work, we do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com as well as livestream.com. So you can go on there, but don't let that take the place of actually coming and being here because you miss out on so much that you can't get from viewing it on a television or a computer. Well, let's get ready for pastors. He's going to come. And if you have your Bibles with you, turn to Hebrews chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And Pastor is going to talk about how you don't want to wait much longer. A lot of people say they want to wait till the end before they get born again, before they reserve their home in heaven. But you might just wait a little too long. So again, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 2. But before that, let's listen to Gold City as they sing, Calvary Came Through. Through days of Hurt and pain, my heart cried out, All is vain. I lost all my will to live. Too many 
times I try, too many times I fail, and it only brought tears and shame. Then I saw that old cross where I was. And I knew one more time There his strength became mine That's when Calvary came through once again When I lost all my courage Just when I fall, I'd been defeated. The cross was all I needed. That's when Calvary came through once again. From the stable to the grave my Savior gave and he gave his life as a final price now I cherish that old tree where I found victory conquering Praise his name, he arose. That's when Calvary came through once again. When I've lost all my courage to win, just when I thought I'd Good morning, and that was Calvary came through once again. My, one of my favorite groups, Gold City. Calvary did come through just when I thought I couldn't make it. Cross was all I needed, and Calvary came through once again. In the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is about, is written to either new Christians who are saved but beginning to falter in their faith, or to Hebrew Christ, or he to Hebrews who are on the verge of, of trusting Christ. I think that probably the, the former, more so than the latter, is written to save but faltering Christians in their faith. And in Hebrews chapter 2, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, then every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of the reward. 
How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. There in verse 3, how shall we escape? if we neglect so great salvation, neglecting salvation, neglecting it. If I had the ability and if I could, everybody that listens to me every week, if I could individually take each person, get aside with them for just a few moments, and I would ask them this question, do you want to go to heaven when you die? I think, I think, now I may be wrong, but I think that most people who believe in heaven would say, well, sure, preacher, doesn't everybody, doesn't everybody want to go? Now, the answer to that question is, to that question is, no, not everybody wants to go to heaven. I've met a boatload of people who really, they could care less if they went to heaven or, or not. I've, I've met people before. I've met people. And I wouldn't say a boatload of people, but I've met a, a bunch of people in my life that really, they care less if they went to heaven or not. Now, I want to say that they don't have any idea what they're talking about because they cannot begin to conceive of the, uh, of the, the depths of hell and what it is like. But if I were to ask most people, I think most people, and again, I could be really wrong on this. Most people would say, yeah, I want to go to heaven. I really do want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. I do want to go to heaven. But I just don't, I just don't have time for it right now. I don't have time to put in to this thing, well, you know, to go to heaven, you got to do this, blah, that, and blah, 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 blah. And you got to do all these other things and to go to heaven. Now, number, number one, that isn't true. That isn't true about it. But people neglect salvation. They neglect it. It's a free gift. The Bible says it's a gift, and a gift of necessity is free. Now, if you have to work for it, brother, it's not a gift. If I were to say to you, I'm going to give you $100, I'm going to give you $100. However, you got to run around the church 30 times without stopping. And then I, that's not a gift. And if somebody's, and I say to you, well, the gift of, of, of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a gift. You, you, there's nothing you can do to earn that gift. Now, people neglect it. They say, well, I want to go to heaven, but there's probably so much that you have to do to, to go to heaven that I really don't have time, and so they, they neglected him. And some people, in, in honesty, will say, Preacher, I will see to this thing about salvation before I die. Now, somebody asked, Preacher, do you think that people can get saved when they're dying? I have no doubt about it. The Bible gives us a, a perfect instance, or uh, uh, maybe that's not the, the correct word, gives a perfect example of the thief on the cross. Now, the thief on the cross knew he was dying. He said to the other thief, well, we're getting what we deserve. But he said to him, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said today, today, the thief was dying. Now, Jesus died sometime before 3 o'clock. Now, if we understand the Bible, and I think we do understand the Bible at this point clearly, the Passover was going to begin about 6 o'clock, and the Jews did not want those bodies hanging on the cross. So Jesus died sometime before 3 o'clock. The Roman soldiers came with a club and absolutely crushed the legs of the two other uh, guys that were hanging beside Jesus, so that they suffocated quite rapidly 
and died. Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. But I sure wouldn't want to wait to see. I'm about to die. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to, I'm going to say this to you, dear friend. You that are listening say, well, I, I'll get saved when, when I, I just have a little bit of time left. I've lived my life. I've done what I wanted. And now I'm going to get saved. It doesn't work like that. You don't get saved on your time. You get saved on God's time. And the Bible says that now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Many of you hear the program each week, and you say, Jenkins, you're right. I do need to be saved. I do need to trust Christ. And, uh, but I'm going to do that when, when I'm ready, when it's about time for me to die. I'm going to trust. You've neglected salvation. You'll, you'll never get saved on your time, dear friend. You'll get saved on God's time. Now, many people neglect the thing of salvation. People who don't go to church, I'm going to say this. You may not agree with this, but I'm going to say this anyway because the Bible says it. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. I'm amazed that people who say that they're atheists, how they get so mad. You know, it, it, if, if God doesn't exist, and I'm telling you he does, they get mad at a God who doesn't exist. Why don't they get mad at fairies? They don't exist. The reason they get mad when you talk about God and you bring God in the picture because they know deep down in their heart there is a God and they know that one day they're going to meet him and they rail against him now. But people who aren't atheists, just everyday, ordinary, go to work, stay at home, whatever you want to call it, folks would say, yeah, I'm, I want to go to heaven. I just don't really have time for it. They're neglecting it. And Paul writes, how shall we escape if we neglect it? Paul again says in 1 Corinthians that now is the accepted time. Not next week. God said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Solomon writes in Proverbs 27, verse 1, He that hardeneth his neck oft times being reproved shall suddenly be cut off, and that without remedy. Many hear the program and say, Yeah, Jenkins, you're right. I need to be saved. I need to trust Christ. But I'll do it when I'm ready. I'll do it when I, my life has, has lived and, and I'm older, and, and then I'll, I'll get saved then. I'll trust Christ then. No, you won't. You, you won't do that. So how do you know that? Because you've hardened your heart, hardened your heart, hardened your heart, hardened, hardened your heart. And one day, one, my spirit, God said, will not always strive. Man, one God, day God just said, well, that's enough. Listen, how shall we escape if we neglect it? We can't neglect it. You know what happens if you neglect things? They get run down. I, I love gardening. I have a fairly good-sized garden every year, and, you know, it was pretty good this year. If I don't go out there, Every day. And hole in the garden. You say, well, there aren't any weeds. If you, if you go out there and hoe every day, there aren't going to be any weeds. Exactly. That's the point. If I let it go for a week, man, those things start springing up everywhere. Then it just makes it that much harder. If I neglect my garden, it's going to become overrun with weeds. If you neglect your house, It'll be full of cobwebs and spider webs, and it'll get there just by neglect, just letting things go. If you just let the house go, one of the laws of the universe is that everything and anything left to itself will run down. If we neglect, but if we neglect salvation, how shall we escape? There is no escape. There is no getting out of it. If you neglect it. Now, I know, you know people say, well, well you Baptists, you, you guys all think that, you know, you, you've got the only answer. No, I, I'm, I don't have the answers. But God's word does. And God says that now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow or at the end of the week or the end of the month 
or before the end of the year, God says that now you realize you're not guaranteed, you're not, you're not promised another breath. You don't know if you'll draw another breath. You don't know that. And so for you to say, well, I'll do it when, when I have more time. I'll do it when I'm older. I'll trust Christ when I have a more convenient day. There was a guy in the Bible in the book of Acts. He said to Paul, Paul had witnessed to him, he said, go thy way. He said, I'll call upon thee some more convenient day. On a more convenient day, I'll call for you. As far as we know from reading in the Bible, that convenient day did not come. So I said, well, today's not convenient. I, I'm busy today. You're neglecting salvation. Well, I've got other plans. You're neglecting salvation. My friend, I want you to know that the devil is doing everything he can to get you to neglect salvation. The Bible says in the book of Revelation in chapter 12 that he deceiveth the whole world. You say, well, I don't even know if there is a devil. Well, he's got you. In Matthew chapter 4, where we read about the temptation of Christ, five times the word devil is used. Five times the devil is used. That name is used. Friend, he's real. And he's trying to get you to put it off. I remember before I was saved, I remember my old preacher, Dr. Don McKnight, would always say, the devil will always say to you, well, what that guy is saying is true, but just do it next week. Don't do that today. Just do that next week. Trust Christ next week. Uh, or next month. Or, you know, once you got married. Um, well, you know, maybe when you're middle-aged. Uh, because what he's saying is true. You need to be saved, but just don't do that today. I think of the rich young ruler who came running to Jesus. And he said, good master, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, he asked the wrong question. That He said, what must I do? That's the wrong question right there. But Jesus gave him the commandments of his relationship to other people. The one thing that Christ didn't say there was, thou shalt not covet. And that was the kid's sin. But he said, all these I've kept from my youth up. See, salvation is not, there, there are two kinds of salvation in the world. Every religion, every religion. I don't care what the religion is. Every religion in the world, their plan of salvation can be found in one of two ways. Do or done. Do. That kind of salvation is, well, you've got to do this, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do this. And if you do this, and you do this, and do this, and do this, then maybe you'll go to heaven. I've asked people before with that kind of mentality and salvation. I've said to them, well, if I do everything that your particular religion says to do, if I do all those things, will you guarantee, will you guarantee me that I will go to heaven immediately when I die? Well, no, I can't guarantee that. Well, then why would I want to do that? Why would you want to do that? Every religion in the world is either do or it's done. Jesus said it is finished. My friends, the plan of salvation is done. There's nothing left to do but believe it, to trust it, to receive it, to enter in through the door, to take a bite of the bread of life. And you say, well, what do you mean? Simply by faith, by faith, trust Christ. See, everybody else says, well, you got to go to church. You got to keep the commandments. You got to tithe. You got to live a good life. You got to pray. You got to read your Bible. You got to be kind to your neighbor. You got to be kind to your wife. Uh, you got to quit sinning. I heard some, and I, I say this kindly. I heard some nitwit, and don't write in to me. On the radio said that if you want God to protect you, you got to quit sinning right now. Oh, wait a minute, I just said, all right, right now. Oh, wait a minute, I just sinned again, right now. Listen, you can't quit sinning. Like try to tell a dog, start meow and quit barking, you, it won't happen. We neglect salvation. People say, well, there are too many dues. There's no dues to it, it's done, just trust them. Don't neglect it any longer, dear friend. I was, at, most of you know, I, I was, I work for South Lewis, I drive a school bus during the week. Somebody came up to me and asked me a question the other day. 
uh, about something, and and I said, well, do you really want my answer? And they said, yeah, I really want your answer. And there was another driver sitting right next to me in his bus. He opened his window and said, I'd really like to hear what you've got to say about that myself. Listen, time is drawing shorter because everybody agrees that something is about to happen. They may not be able to put their finger on it. They may not be able to say what it is. But to them, something is about to happen. Now listen, you can't neglect it much longer, dear friend. You can't neglect it much longer. Time is rapidly passing by. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That word perilous, that particular word used in the Greek is used one other place in the New Testament. When it talks about the men who lived in the tombs, says they were exceeding fierce. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, this know also that in the last days, exceedingly fierce days, perilous times shall come. The guy sitting next to me said, yeah, you're right, something's going to happen. I don't know what it is, but something's going to happen. How shall we escape if we neglect, if we put it off? I'll do with that next week. I'll do that when I get old. No, dear friend. No, 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 no. Why not today? Why not today? What keeps you from being saved today? What keeps you from trust? Well, my friends, my family, my worker buddies, what keeps you from being saved today? Jesus said, you will not come that you might have life. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise, but you see, you must come to him. You must trust him. Don't neglect it any longer. Don't put it off any longer. Don't say tomorrow. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't say next week. You don't know if you'll be here next week. I don't know if I'll be here next week. No one knows. Dear friend, I, I want to encourage you to trust Christ today. Don't neglect. How? Paul asks the question in Hebrews 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Don't neglect it. Don't put it off. Don't wait another day. Call upon him today. Lord Jesus, I need to be saved Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart and to forgive me of my sins and to be my Savior. Lord, I trust you today. The best way I know how, I trust you as my Savior. Come into my heart and save me. Dear friend, he will save you today. If you'll call, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you neglect it, if you put it off, I play a song on the piano, one day too late, one day too late, you finally came to call his name, but one day too late. Trust him, friend. Call upon him today. Don't neglect it any longer. Trust Jesus, because tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, why don't you make today the day that you begin your new life as a child of God? Pastor asked multiple times, what is it that's keeping you from getting saved? What's keeping you from accepting the gift that God has provided already for you? He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's not that we want your money. We just want everyone to go to heaven. If you have any questions today, or if you would like to know more about how you can know for sure that you are going to heaven when you die, Give us a call today. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.